If you've been following the news, you may have heard of some very disconcerting news reports that as many as six young Canadian men of Somali origin have disappeared in recent months. They are believed to have joined al-Shabaab. That is an al-Qaeda inspired Islamist movement in southern and central Somalia. Last week, the Canadian government put al-Shabaab on its list of known terrorist organizations. The Somali-Canadian community is also concerned about al-Shabaab, which it says is recruiting young Somali-Canadians. Ahmed Hassan is the national president of the Canadian Somali Congress. He says a failure to fully integrate young Somali men into Canadian society is making them more susceptible to al-Shabaab's message. And he joins me now from Toronto. Mr. Hassan, welcome to The Link. Uh, thank you. Now, the, government, uh, the federal government in Canada has added al-Shabaab to the list of groups that it calls terrorist organizations. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it's a timely move. Uh, we welcome uh, that addition to that list. Uh, precisely because al-Shabaab uh, over the last number of uh, years has uh, moved very quickly to indicate to the rest of the world that they are uh, indeed a terrorist organization, uh, both in word and in deed. Um, they have uh, acted uh, in such a manner as to facilitate uh, terrorist activity and also carry out uh, uh, terrorism on a, on a, on a scale uh, unheard of in Somalia. They have also publicly stated uh, recently that they have allied themselves uh, with Al-Qaeda and uh, they make no bones about it. So uh, at this time uh, there's no doubt in our minds that uh, the Canadian government's move to list them uh, is the right move because they do fit into uh, the profile of a terrorist organization. And why do you think Al-Shabaab is, is seeking uh, young Somali Canadians and other young Somalis from Western countries? Uh, I used to wonder about that because there, you know, there all obviously isn't a shortage of young, unemployed, vulnerable uh, uh, men in Somalia. So I used to wonder why they were doing that. And uh, basically the conclusion that I reached was based on the pattern that I observed of uh, disappearances from uh, the United States, uh, the UK, uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and now Canada, uh, uh, alas. So basically, the, the pattern uh, suggests that uh, uh, Al-Shabaab targets these, these young men because uh, they have Western passports, and so therefore they're more, uh, once they're trained, they can be, um, they're more mobile. Number one. Number two, they bring a certain uh, uh, profile to the organization. Uh, when you recruit a Western uh, person, it brings a certain bravado to the to the organization. And last but not least, uh, it's something that I, I was very surprised with. Um, due to stricter and stricter financial uh, controls over terrorist financing all over the world, um, the terrorist organizations uh, not just al-Shabaab, but others, have been targeting Westerners because Westerners uh, bring money. They bring finances to them as well. And, uh, and uh, the, the, the youth that uh, were, the, the American Somali youth that uh, al-Shabaab was able to recruit uh, out of Minnesota, uh, the two dozen, uh, they were expected to pay their own way to, to Somalia, and they were also expected to pay for their own training, their own weapons, and everything else. So basically, it's, a, it's another way for these groups to raise money, to attract these Westerners, and to also utilize the networks that these Westerners have in their, in their diaspora communities. Well, Mr. Ahmed Hussain, I guess the big question is, why are these uh, young Western uh, Somalis who are Canadian citizens or American citizens, yeah. uh, as the case may be? I mean, these are, in many cases, are, are young men who were born in uh, Canada or, or who arrived here at a very early age and therefore have grown up in this culture. So why are they vulnerable to the message of uh, a group from what is essentially a, a foreign country? That's right. I, th that's uh, a good question. Essentially, uh, if you look at the profile of the uh, two dozen uh, uh, recruits that were recruited out of uh, the United States, 
th- there were two waves. The, there was uh, one group that first uh, left in uh, 06, 07, and then the second group left in 08, 2008. And there were differences between those two, uh, those two waves. The first wave was basically uh, young men who had uh, no future in America, uh, uh, people who had just gotten out of prison, gang members, uh, others who had dropped out of school and, you know, had had no uh, hope in America. Those were the ones that were attracted to al-Shabaab because al-Shabaab promised them that they would uh, uh, give, give them responsibility, treat them like adults, give them positions of power. There were young men who were recruited to go back to Somalia and al-Shabaab made them run small villages and, and, and run businesses on behalf of al-Shabaab. So they felt like adults and they felt appreciated and they felt that for the first time in their life that their lives had meaning. So that group in turn then turned around and acted as the recruiters for the second wave that left. The second wave were actually young men who had a better, brighter future in America, uh, medical students, others, uh, who uh, college students. And they, when they went there, they didn't like what they saw. They quickly uh, uh, decided to leave, and some of them uh, escaped, and some of them were shot to death when they tried to escape. But the first group never came back because uh, what they got out of al-Shabaab is the best that they could do with their lives. Uh, we don't know exactly what attracted the Canadian uh, disappearances uh, because we, we don't have their exact profile. But essentially, the larger uh, picture in, in all of this is the integration issue. First of all, I want to put this into context. Six out of 150,000 people is a small number. So it, it's not like all young people in Canada are going to Shabab. Uh, however, six is still uh, a concerning number to us because we don't want it to increase. But we feel that we, 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 we're not blaming Canada for, for these young men going back to Somalia. We think it's, it's a horrible thing that they're doing. However, uh, we feel that... Uh, what makes these young, some of these young men vulnerable to this message of alienation that Shabab is peddling is precisely the lack of integration into Canadian society that uh, is going on. And what can be done to, to make these uh, young men feel more uh, Canadian, I guess? Well, I'll give you a perfect example. I, I, I spent 10 weeks in Alberta uh, working with the Canadian Somali community over there, and um, most of them have immigrated from Ontario, uh, the parents and the and the and the and the young uh, men in Alberta are, have actually been born in Alberta, but the mainstream community in Alberta still sees them as refugees who have just arrived from Somalia. So there's a disconnect between who they really are and what the mainstream looks at them as. Now, because the mainstream and the other government agencies look at these people as refugees, they're providing the wrong kind of services to them. They're providing immigrant settlement services to this community. But the sad fact is this community are no longer immigrants. They're Canadian citizens. Almost 70% of them are below the age of 18, uh, 14, which, means, which makes them a very young community. So there's a wrong provision. There's a provision of the wrong kind of services. What the, what the government and other organizations should be providing this community is integration services, not immigrant settlement services. That is where the, uh, the rubber meets the road. Mm-hmm. And what about the, the the idea that this group now has been listed as uh, as a terrorist organization by the federal government? Is that going to affect things uh, very much? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we can learn from the experience of the Tamil Tigers. Once the Tamil Tigers was listed as a terrorist organization by the UK, Australia, the US, and Canada, it had a real impact on the ground. The number of suicide bombings went sharply down. Financing went down. Uh, the group was pretty much immobilized. In, uh, b- uh, from getting any support from the diaspora. We think the same thing will happen with Shabab, which is why we think this move was the right move. It will have a real impact. It will make it extremely difficult for recruitment in Canada by Shabab. It will make it extremely difficult for uh, any people in the diaspora who think it's okay to financially support the al-Shabab. That will be extremely difficult now. So it will have an extreme difficulty and it'll be extremely difficult for al-Shabaab to carry out its uh, terrorist campaign on the ground when it's starved of funding and recruits from abroad. And Mr. Hussain, what about the Canadian Somali community itself? I mean, as, as president of uh, the Canadian Somali Congress, what is the community here in Canada doing? 
Well, we're we actually doing the heavy lifting. We have been spending a lot of time and energy now on changing the perception that people have about this community. We've been going around uh, holding press conferences and uh, educating the larger community on the fact that this is no longer an immigrant community, that we're Canadians, that this is our home, that we care about Canada, that we want to integrate, that we're no longer immigrants. That's one. Two, we're educating our own people uh, on, the, on the importance of uh, putting Canada first. And, uh, and one of the concrete ways in which we have tried to uh, mitigate the alienation is to integrate this community as fast as possible into the mainstream. A good example of an initiative that we've carried out in cooperation with the Canadian Jewish community and uh, the Canadian International Peace Project is a mentorship project, a national mentorship project that partners young Canadian Somali uh, university college and young professionals uh, match them with Jewish mentors who mentor them. So it's the first Canadian Somali Jewish mentorship project. And as a result of that, we are on track to putting together 120 partnerships between mentees and mentors. And that way you develop 120 young, a cadre of leadership in this community that will turn around and integrate the community even faster. So that's one way of... Yeah. Uh, in which the Somali community in Canada is taking steps to uh, to to push this integration agenda forward. Well, Mr. Hussein, thank you very much for talking to us about this today. You're most welcome. Thank you. And that was Ahmed Hussein. He is the national president of the Canadian Somali Congress.